something the Lord has been speaking to me about for some time now. By the grace of God, I present to you glory to possess the nations. Maybe we can shout it together. Glory to possess the nations. Let's do it for the last time. Glory to possess the nations. One of our pastors, Pastor Isaac Osei, led us in a profound exposition on the glory and the presence of God. I'm picking on one of his statements, then we continue from there. There was a big lesson I learned that glory goes with the presence of God. And the first point we want to establish, and I would like you to follow us, by the grace of God, I believe he will speak to our hearts. Amen. The first point is the glory of God is God himself. Did you catch that? The glory of God is who? God himself. Let's see God's reply to Moses' request. Moses speaks to God in our team test. Show me your glory. Exodus 33, 18. Show me your glory. And now let's see the response of God to Moses. We will go to the verse 32 of Exodus 33, part of the response he gave. Remember Moses' question. Show me your glory. He's asking God, show me something. And that thing is called glory. But let's look at a part of the response God gives to Moses in Exodus 33, verse 22. Exodus 33, verse 22. The NIV goes this way. When my glory passes by, check the wording carefully. When my glory passes by, this is God speaking. I'm sure we all know that. When my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft in the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Can I ask a simple question? What was to pass by? Shout it if you know it. Who passed by? Have you caught the import of the test? He says, when my glory passes by, in other words, something is coming to pass by, and it is called glory. So assuming you don't know what that thing is, he goes on to say that, look, I'm going to put you in a cleft. In other words, a rock by my side, and I will cover you with my hand until that thing that was first referred to as glory now is changed to a person saying that until I... So what does it mean? The glory is who? God himself. So when we say someone carries the glory of God, who is he carrying? God himself. The glory of God is God himself. I pray that as part of today's service, if there is anything we would desire, we would desire to carry the glory of God. I'm yearning to carry God. I'm yearning to become a container that in my presence people feel God. People encounter God. People experience the supernatural because God is with me for I carry his glory. Right, let's move to the second major point. It's a form of statement. Let me put it this way. So when you carry the glory, who do you carry? Are we together? So when you carry the glory, you carry God. So the second major point for today's message is when you carry the glory, you carry God. Are we together? What was the first point? The glory of God is God himself. The second point is when you carry the glory, you carry God. Who do we carry as Christians? Let's shout it together if we know. I carry God. God, what an amazing truth. Can I let the workplace, my colleague workers, know that I carry somebody called God? 
Can I let my family members remember that I carry God? Can I let nations remember that I carry God? Can I let my friends know that I carry God? So you see, in the possessing the nation's agenda, dear ones, all we are asking for is to carry God to wherever we go. Did you catch that? Because he lives in us and the expectation is that wherever we go, we must carry God. Do you know what that means? Our presence must announce God. Hey. When people are desperate and they see you coming, they must feel that God has arrived. They must feel that the solution bearer has come. They must feel that the one who will bring the transformation has come. Let your presence announce peace. Let your presence announce joy. Let your presence announce faithfulness. Let your presence announce kindness. Let your presence announce self-control. Let your presence announce gentleness. You may refer to Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23. I just mentioned the fruit of the Spirit. In addition to that, our presence must announce the supernatural. As I demonstrate the life of Christ, I also demonstrate the ability of Christ to things. I found one thing in the Christian body. We always have the temptation of choosing one over the other, but most of the time in the scheme of God, it is both. You get people who are so glued to the power and the giftings of the Holy Spirit and they miss the fruit of the Spirit. You get other people too who are so much into the fruit of the Holy Spirit. This is the lifestyle you must live and they miss the power and the gift is of the Holy Spirit. But if you are a member of the Church of Pentecost, if you can hear our voice wherever you are, we present unto you the message of the Lord which contains the power and the giftings of the Holy Spirit and also the life of Christ. This is the totality of our message. So that when you have to become a performer of the supernatural, you are not limited just by the life. And when people have to see the life of Christ in you, you are not limited just by the supernatural. Are you getting it? Become a container of both in the name of Jesus. We're talking about we are containing God. Let people feel uncomfortable about sinning when you are around. Hello. Let people feel uncomfortable about lying when you are around. Let people feel uncomfortable about cheating, about backbiting in your presence because you carry God. When people are able to do these things in your presence, you have become just like them, but no, you aren't. Your DNA is different. You carry God, a holy God. We must leave the mark of righteousness wherever we pass. If there is anything the world must record of, of our existence or of our passing through, it must be the mark of righteousness. Dear ones, please listen to this carefully. Our inner man is Christ. So our outer being must also be Christ. Hello. Our inner man is who? Christ. Therefore, our outer being must also be Christ. Our outer label must match our inner content as we disturb our customers, the world. Can I repeat that just for the sake of emphasis? Our outer label must match our inner content. Else we disturb our customers. The world, the world is our customer. Therefore, our outer label. I was given an illustration somewhere that if you go to the supermarket or the shop and there is a label of ideal milk, you expect the content to be ideal. If God has become resident in us, then our label as Christians must reflect who is living within us. Is somebody catching the import of the message today? If you buy ideal milk, you get home, open the can only to realize that it's oil in it. I'm sure you're going to be disappointed. Contained in us is God. Therefore, our label as Christians must reflect that. It must come through our speech. When you get to an environment of desperation because within you, oh, David says, my cup runs over. If you have a little in the cup, what it means is that when people hold the cup, they are holding the cup. But when your cup runs over with the content in the container, when people hold the container, what are they holding? They are holding what is contained in the container. Are you getting it? If oil is overflowing in a can, when you hold the can, you are not holding the can. You are holding what? The oil. 
when we talk about baptism of the Holy Spirit, when we talk about being immersed, we are now bringing ourselves into the one who is in us so that people can no longer touch us. You dare not touch me because you will touch the oil. You dare not touch her because you will touch what is in her. No one there threatens you because he's threatening something deeper in you. Let your outer label reflect what is in you. The one who is in me is greater than the one who is out there. But I must have a conscious understanding that I must reflect this. Are we together? Our outer label must match our inner content, else we disturb our customers, the world. Friends, we carry God and his glory. But please sit up well and listen to this advice from Paul. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7 to 10, let's take this scripture carefully. For some time now, the Lord has been speaking to me about it. We will look at another dimension of it today. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, from verse 7 to 10. But... We have this treasure. You know what that means? This great God and his glory. We have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. I'm just dwelling on an aspect briefly. Remember that this glory, this God, is contained in in something that is made or described as what? Jars. Let's shout it. Jars of what? Not jars of gold, not jars of silver, not jars of iron, but jars of clay. You know what that means? It's weak. Hello. It's breakable. It can leak when it cracks or you can drain off. Are you following it? It can be smashed. It can even be destroyed. But remember this. The smashing of a clayey object only reduces it to particles that can be remolded into another pot. Oh, you didn't get that. So when David says that, do not rejoice my enemy, what he's saying that if you like crush me, all you have done is you have broken a clayey pot it has not finished its purpose. All it has to do is to find itself in the house of the porter. Then the porter will pick the clay again, add water to it, remold it into another pot. Today is your season of remolding into another pot. I don't know how you have been broken. I don't know how you have been smashed. But you know what? Let me disappoint you with this. I don't really care or I don't really mind about that. The truth of the matter is come to the portal. He will remold you. He will make you anew. He will give you fresh oil, fresh mandate, fresh breakthrough, fresh territories. They would have taken one, but seven is on its way. They would have stolen a little, but a lot is on its way coming. Just allow yourself in the hands of the portal. Is somebody willing? To say, Lord, mold me. Lord, make me afresh. Shall we rise to our feet? Abba, Abba, Andosa. If you feel like lifting your hands, there is fresh oil. The porter is here. The one who is able to remold. The one who is able to repackage. Dear ones, we have only become particles in his hands. Let's call on God to work on us. Let's call on God to work on our emotions. Let's call on God to work on our thoughts. Let's call on God to work on our actions. To match the great God who has come to live in us. Shall we rise and pray unto God? Speak to God about your situation. Lord, shape me. Lord, Lord, refine me. Lord, straighten me. Lord, remold me. Lord, repackage me. Lord, take me to that place. In the bar, don't they mass out a balose? Baluli kabande yele kabonde yele bahaya. The first was not enough. That victory was just the beginning. I am awaiting your encounter. I am awaiting your making up. I am awaiting the next season. I am awaiting the next moment. Lord God. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Labranda Yerebe Katsonda Yorobos. Spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God. Fall afresh. Fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God. Spirit of the And melt me now, break me, break me, melt me, and mold me, and feel me. Spirit of the Lamb and God. Now, beloved, wherever you are, if you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, just use your language. If you are not praying in words you can understand and just say, Lord, break me Lord, me Lord, make me for your purpose, O oh God. More of you, Lord, ni minima moni masua. My outer level must match my contents. Therefore, work on my emotions, O Lord. Work on my thoughts. Work on me, O God. I'm only like particles. Clay before you go. I want to be yours, O God. I want to be yours, O God. I want to be yours. Rework me, remold me, rekindle me, refire me, remake me, re-strengthen me, revive me, re-energize me, God. Lima tumba so that I will reflect you, God. I will reflect you, God. Babombe sopa inde ketosa. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for this spiritual surgery. Thank you, God, for this transformation, Lord. The very thing we struggle to do right, we're going back to do it now. We're going back to make amends. We're going back. As people reflecting you at the school, at the workplace, in the family, because our labels must match our content. We give you praise to God. So me matoya brande. Containing you is life. Containing you is life. Therefore, your level must reflect life. Oh my God, containing me is righteousness. Therefore, my level must reflect righteousness. Containing me is victory. Containing me, containing me, containing me. This all there is. We give you praise, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Containing us is something great. Lord. Our labels must reflect it. Yes. If you have fallen in time past, brother, sister, I've got good news for you. The advantage of being clay is that you can be remolded. You have no idea why it was put in clay. You can be remolded. If you have failed, you can be remolded to succeed. 
If you have disappointed yourself and those who put you there, you can be remolded today. Yes. You can be repackaged to reflect the life of Christ. Whatever you are struggling, the things of the flesh. Today I sense a remolding, hey, a repackaging. We will leave this particular day as remolded people. Lord. Reflecting the glory of God. Let's shout a big amen to that. Amen. Beloved, so far we have established two points. Just a few more minutes and we end. What's the first point? The glory of God is who? And what is the second point? When you carry the glory, you carry who? So what we add into that is let your life reflect the glory which is in you. So when you carry the glory, you carry God, hence let your life Reflect the glory which is in you. Let's take a break now and focus on just the last point. The end goal is to make the kingdom of this world the laws. The end goal, the totality, the end point. All that God is doing, looking at, God is expecting is to make the kingdom of this world his are we together? There's a scripture I've been using. I'm sure I've quoted it here. I caught an insight from our chairman, and ever since it's become one of my, my, my scriptures. Obadiah 21. Maybe we can read together the King James Version. And saviors shall come up. Where? On Mount. To judge the Mount of. And the. And the. What shall be the laws of where this world <laughs> shall be whose? <laughs> the kingdom shall be the laws. Look at Revelation 11, verse 15 too. We will do the NIV with that. Revelation 11, 15. Revelation 11, 15. Are we all there? The seventh angel sounded his trumpet and there were loud voices in heaven. Remember, loud voices, in other words, screams. Many confessions over there. And let's listen to what they were saying. The kingdom of the... has become the kingdom of our... and of his Messiah. And he will reign forever and ever. Friends, the end goal is to make the kingdom of this world, the laws. Another time we may continue, but listen to this concluding statement. The end goal is to make the kingdom of this world, the laws. So all that God is doing from the preaching of the gospel leading to repentance, leading to confession of sins, Leading on to water baptism is to recruit an army. An army that will facilitate the making of the kingdom of the world, the laws. The supernatural encounters, the breakthrough is to enforce the kingdom of heaven onto the kingdom of this world. So that it becomes the laws. All that God is doing is to facilitate the making of this world, the laws. But God needs a certain kind of people. This is the conclusion of all we're trying to do today. God needs a certain kind of people. Obadiah 21 says, he calls them saviors. In this simple form, us, those of us. Who have come to Jesus. But not only that. These people must come from a place. Do you remember the scripture called Mount what? Mount Zion. The author of the book of Hebrews. In fact in Hebrews chapter 12. Talks about what Mount Zion is. To sum it up. It represents the presence of who? It represents who? The presence of God. In other words, to facilitate God's agenda, listen to this carefully, my dear brothers and sisters. It's so cool to all that we do it. To facilitate the making of the kingdom of this world, God's, there is a certain kind of people, believers, 
But these believers must come from or carry something called Mount Zion, meaning the presence of God. What does the presence of God mean? The glory of who? So the secret in the possessing the nation's agenda, the secret in influencing the world, the secret in facilitating the kingdom of this world to become that of the Lord rests on people who carry the glory of God. Not ordinary people. You must carry something called the glory of God. Moses found this secret. He says, do not send us on. Exodus 33. If your presence is not going with us, you know why? He says that how will they distinguish us from them? Friends, the differentiating factor in all churches, the differentiating factor in all humans, the differentiating factor in all businesses is this thing called the glory of God. Church, if you carry the glory of God, you make a difference. Now listen to the last point. Moses again found this mystery. He therefore says, God replies Moses and says that my presence will go with you. You know what that means? My glory will go with you. You're going to contain me. You're going to carry me. And when you carry me, you know the outcome of that? I will give you. Who needs rest today from the issues of life? Who needs rest from the troubles of life? <laughs> As a kingdom possessor, the ticket is what we have shared today. Carry the glory of God and he will give you rest. <laughs> Carry the glory of God and he will give you rest. You want to lift up your hands unto God and call on God that God from this day, if there is anything I need, the glory of God, the glory of God, you yourself, I empty myself. Is any container ready to receive him? He's pouring more of himself today. I sense him and I know he's here. He's pouring more of himself. The glory of God is who or what I need. God himself. You want to lift up your hands and call on God that God fill me more. God, I yearn for you. I yearn for your presence. For that is what will make the difference. The glory of God, the glory of God, the presence of God is all I need. It's all I need. Lift up your voice, beloved. Let's begin to pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God needs a certain kind of people, those who carry His glory. Those who carry his presence. Thank you. Thank you, Let it of God. The glory 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 of God. You are the one I need. Cause me to know. Bring me to my need. You are my desire. You are my desire. Cause me to see. Bring me, bring me to my knees. Bring me to my knees. And feed me with your very self. 
with your very self. A touch of you can change my life. You can change my life. Bring me, bring me to your group and feed me with your very self. A little more, Sakata, the Bayamas, and of you. song again as we lift up our hands finally and sing prayerfully we want to say Lord touch me oh sister the ministry will increase yes. but it takes the glory oh Jesus, oh, Jesus. let some ashes today be replaced with the glory of God oh me mi mamu kati to taya ada. Ibandi le to sakaba bosa. Ali bosa ke balua le Let the disgrace be replaced with glory. Let it be replaced with glory. Me atori ando le bosa. Ababo, Rabababa, 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 Rabababa